Hello, thank you all for joining us today for our Apprenticeship Week talk live with Jonathan Higgins. Um, we're going to hand over to Jonathan who will talk to you all about his apprenticeship experience. So I hope you enjoy the talk. Um, please feel free to use the Q&A box at the side to send in any questions and we'll get these asked at the end. Hope you enjoy the talk. Thank you. Over to you, Jonathan. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Jonathan Higgins and I'll be discussing with you today about STEM apprenticeships and my experience as a, as a STEM apprentice. So I'm going to go through the following agenda today. So I'm going to have a brief introduction of, about myself and where I am today and, and what I'm currently doing. And then I'm going to move on to my apprenticeship journey from right from the beginning of my apprenticeship right to the very end, uh, just to give you a bit of an insight and hopefully answer some of them unanswered questions that you have. And then I'm going to sort of bring bring together what, what STEM is like at work and particularly for me, uh, specifically in the wastewater sector of the water industry. And then moving on from that, I'm going to start debunking some common myths about apprenticeships, uh, rumours that you hear, but I'm, I'm going to use my own experience and some statistics to, uh, to sort of cover those points. And then I'm going to move on to some further detail around um, future opportunities that can arise from being a STEM apprentice. So a brief introduction to me. I was in the advanced apprenticeship scheme at Thames Water back in 2008, which initially starts with two dual skill pathways where I followed the electrical and instrumentation and control and automation route. After my first year as an apprentice, um, there is an option to do electrical and mechanical as well. But I'll go, on, go into a bit more detail into that within my next slides. So I'm currently uh, the London Water Project Delivery Manager at Thames Water, where I manage a team of project engineers delivering engineer, engineering projects across multiple disciplines uh, across Thames Water's water production sites, providing wholesome water to a circle of five million customers. I'm also a, a member of the Institute of Engineering and Technology, or the IET for short, under whose membership I hold chartered engineer status. I've worked in the STEM industry for circa 13 years, specifically within the water industry, but I did have a short spell in the power generation industry, maintaining three 400, 400 megawatt combined cycle gas turbines and their ancillary processes. I've recently become a STEM ambassador in late 2020, and this is my first presentation in this new role, and I'm really looking forward to today, even though I'm slightly nervous. So, I'm going to move on to uh, my next slide and start talking about my apprenticeship journey. So my apprenticeship journey started way before the interview stage, just trying to work out what I wanted to do, but also considering my future. I come from a reasonably sized family with role models across all industries, from finance, teaching to engineering, which is where I started and following in my brother's footsteps in the water industry. The interviews I had uh, at the time were in three stages. Uh, initially, uh, the initial application stage where my application was vetted. Then I had to do three multiple choice exams uh, on site at Thames Water um, in maths, English and engineering. And these, were, uh, uh, and these were conducted throughout the day. And then an assessment day where you worked with your potential new colleagues to complete multiple tasks in teams and also a practical assessment. Uh, the, practical uh, the practical assessment at Thames Water was wiring a three pin plug and putting together a, a garden tap, which was very interesting, uh, particularly for those who, who weren't quite a fave with uh, doing that before. So I was successful in being offered two apprenticeships, one with Network Rail and one with Thames Water. I chose the Thames Water offer because the Network Rail offer would have meant I, I would have been away from home for nine months in Gosport in, in my first year as an apprentice in, in Network Rail. And I preferred to stay local with my parents and also to follow in my brother's footsteps within the water industry. Within my advanced apprenticeship scheme at Thames Water, I actually joined the workforce in July before attending college full time for 40 weeks from, from the September. This was a great opportunity to get to know the business and also meet the team that I would be working with, but most importantly, my mentor. My mentor was going to be the go to person to support me through my apprenticeship and my on site learning. This was the first person I struck a close rela work relationship with, and we are still in contact today. So as I alluded to, year one of my apprenticeship would be spent at college for 40 weeks obtaining my MVQ level two. 
uh, and this was in performing engineering operations, which consisted of hand skills using tools, machine operations such as lathes and milling machines, electrical installation and testing, and electronic skills such as soldering, uh, printed circuit boards, and programming project uh, program programmable logic controllers. Also during this, we had key skills lessons where we also completed uh, maths and, 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 compute, and computing. And we also car carried out a day release study for studying a BTEC level three national certificate. And in this instance, for me, it was operations and maintenance, which included engineering science studies, as well as further maths and project management. During this period, there was 60 students in multiple industries, such as aviation, tool making, rail, food, fast moving consumer goods and the water industry. This really demonstrated to me at this first stage that the skills and knowledge that I would obtain over the four years could be used across multiple sectors. So in, in year two, my MVQ level two was completed in performing engineering operations uh, when I completed college. And then I moved into my second year of my BTEC uh, national certificate on day release and went back to the workplace to start my on the job training and started my MVQ level three, where I chose two MVQs and that was electrical and control and instrumentation. Whereas others, uh, they went down the mechanical and electrical route. So across years two, three and four, I had to complete what they call write-ups um, on the maintenance tasks that I had undertaken and complete underpinning knowledge questions against the MVQ level three criteria. For each of the MVQ criteria, I had to complete at least three write-ups and one assessment write-up until I could be formally assessed by the training provider to complete my MVQ and, my, and the advanced apprenticeship scheme in its entirety. Just to give you a bit of an insight into write-ups, write-ups can be compared to Haynes Motor Manuals, if you're familiar with them, where each part of the task is described within the task that you are performing, the tools required and, and the relevant information that's related to this task. These items are also accompanied by pictures to demonstrate visually what the write-up is demonstrating. Uh, if you look back on my first slide from my introduction, that picture of me wearing a harness and a hard hat, that, that was me conducting a task and that was going to be formulating as part of my write-up to, to evidence the protective equipment that I was wearing and using to, to show my competence. So moving backwards to the end of year two, I completed my BTEC National Certificate and I was fortunate enough to be offered the opportunity to study a BTEC Higher National Certificate in General Engineering. Uh, this was from my employer and based on the success of, of, of my apprenticeship to date, which I accepted. Uh, having the opportunity to gain this qualification was certainly a springboard to achieving my ambition to becoming an engineer. So fast forward into year four and I had completed all of my write-ups, all my under, underpinning knowledge questions, and my assessments for my MVQ and completed my higher national certificate in general engineering. Based on obtaining these qualifications, I was offered a role as a dual skilled electrical ICA technician at Thameswater. And this is where my STEM career started. So I just wanted to really describe to you guys in my next slide, what tasks that I'd learned as an apprentice, but continued to perform as a competent technician and to demonstrate how science, technology, engineering and maths come together. So STEM at work in the workplace, or for me at the time, it was the wastewater sector. So in wastewater, we have a byproduct called sludge, which is in fact poo. And we removed this in the sewage treatment process at multiple stages to ensure that this doesn't impact the environment and the biodiversity in and around our effluent discharges. This picture shows a primary settlement tank where solids settle from the sewage, where they are scraped into a hopper and pumped into thickening tanks. We thicken this sludge in a process called anaerobic digestion to create biogas for turning into green energy to offset our electricity usage, also as a valuable commodity to offset our operational expenditure. A further byproduct called, called cake is also monetized, which is used as a fertilizer for agricultural rocks use. The following pictures show a task of calibrating a dry solid instrument, which is used uh, used to measure the solids content of the thickened sludge to ensure it is suitable, a suitable thickness for the anaerobic digestion process. To do this, we need to take a wet sample of the thickened sludge and then dry, dry the sample in an infrared moisture analyzer, which weighs the sample once dry to provide a total dry solids percentage. 
This percentage is used in a factor calculation to calculate a new calibration factor to be keyed into the instrument transmitter. But before the instrument is put back into service, the sludge needs to, needs to be claimed from the transducer. And this is a maintenance task that's carried out by maintenance technicians as well as operational technicians on a periodic basis. The, the dry solids instrument's output is used to, uh, using a process control system to ensure the sludge is at optimal thickness for the anaerobic digestion process, as I said. Uh, this is to work efficiently. To produce enough biogas to either fuel our, com uh, fuel our combined heating and power generators or to upgrade to biomethane to be injected into the gas network. Although this appears to be a dirty job, this is process science, instrument technology, engineering maintenance and applied maths coming together to contribute to a cleaner environment and society in a sustainable manner. Next, I want to debunk some common myths about apprenticeships, which I can answer from my own experiences and some statistics as well, as I once said. So firstly, apprenticeships are only available in manual industries. In my experience, this is not true. Let me take the water industry, for example. We don't only have engineering apprenticeships, but we also have science-based apprenticeships where apprentices can obtain the necessary qualifications to become water quality scientists, wastewater process scientists, geologists and hydrologists. You will also find this across other industries, such as the power industry, where they have on-site chemists to monitor cooling water quality and as well as oil analysis. Number two, apprenticeships do not lead to good qualifications. I hope from my previous slides I've highlighted that this is not the case. I obtained one MVQ level two, two MVQ level threes, a BTEC national certificate and a higher national certificate during my apprenticeship. These qualifications are adaptable for a multiple selection of industries and can lead on to further education and definitely further career opportunities. Number three, apprenticeships are just for school leavers. My own experience says this is not true. I didn't become an apprentice until I was 19. Furthermore, when I was 23, I mentored a 23 year old apprentice from their first year to completion. From, from statistics published by the government in 2018 to 2019, 25% of apprentices were under the age of 19. Meanwhile, 46% of apprentices were over the age of 25. You have time to work out what the best career is for you, not only across the STEM industries, but others too. And you can have the confidence that an apprenticeship isn't out of reach, even when you are over the age of 24. Number four, apprentices will never earn much money. Based on my experience, again, this is not true. During my apprenticeship, I was paid more than the minimum wage. I appreciate that not all apprenticeships offer this level of salary, but the salaries you can obtain when you have the relevant experience and proficiencies after completing your apprenticeship will be in line with the national average or more in or more within the chosen subject matter that, that you have chosen as an apprentice. And number five, finally, most apprentices are men. Again, this is not true. In 2018 to 2019, 50.1% of apprentices were female. Out of a circa 393,000 apprentices, 197,000 of them were female and 196,000 were male. Also, I'm seeing a lot more female apprentices than when I was an apprentice, which only qualifies these statistics. So moving forward and finally for me is I want to move into what future opportunities can, can be obtained by being an apprentice. So further education. Due to the qualifications I achieved within my apprenticeship, I've been fortunate on two separate occasions to progress into obtaining further academic qualifications. Fortunately for me, my employer supported me with the resources I needed to first top up to a BTEC higher national diploma, which I've done in general engineering, and then later in, in my career to top up to a Bachelor of Engineering of Honours degree. But even if you do not get the financial support from your employer to gain further qualifications, you can self-study and achieve the same, if not similar qualifications in the future based on the foundations of your apprenticeship. Secondly, a lead into management and beyond. I believe my apprenticeship gave me the necessary skills, knowledge and frontline experience to become a manager. I had not fully, uh, I, had, I had full appreciation of the business from the ground up, which I believe gave me the upper edge when applying and obtaining management roles. I'm currently in my second management role 
and I'm moving into my next management role very soon. And I believe this is all due to the foundations that my apprenticeship has given me. Number three, application of skills and knowledge across multiple industries. As I mentioned through my experience in my first year at college, the skills I would be obtaining can be used across multiple industries, proven by all, all of my peers at college, all from different, different areas of industry. But also, the knowledge and experience you will gain being a full-time employee will give you many other transferable skills, such as communication, leadership, and people integration skills, and many, many more. And, and, la and, and last on this slide, access to professional institutions. Professional institutions are very supportive of apprenticeships and apprentices. Not only are they, are they full of events and exciting updates within industries, they also offer continued professional development or CPD for, for short and networking opportunities with like-minded people to drive your career forward. As I alluded to at the beginning, I'm a member of uh, an institution where I receive support and development by, to obtain my chartered engineer status. And again, I don't believe I would have gained this, state, this professional status if I did not have that foundation of an apprenticeship. This concludes my presentation about my journey as an apprentice and beyond. I hope this has been informative and provided you with an insight into a STEM career. Uh, I want to thank you all for listening and good luck in your studies and your future career planning. And I believe we're going to move on to some Q&A now. Thank you, Thank Jonathan. You, Jonathan. Uh, right, so the first question we have coming in is, did you consider any other apprenticeships? And if so, why did you settle on Thames Water? Um, so again, this was really driven from my sort of my family's involvement, uh, particularly uh, my brother worked in the water industry. Um, and that, that really sort of pointed me in that direction. But as I said at the beginning, I also uh, um, uh, got accepted uh, for a role as an apprentice at Network Rail, which I didn't uptake. Um, that was generally because of the, the first year arrangement for me. I, I wasn't quite comfortable moving away from home for nine months uh, and, and, and working in gospel, but it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for other people. Thank you. Um, and another question, what are the challenges of your job? Challenges, wow. Um, get, getting the basics right is one of our mottos at the moment, and uh, we, we must ensure that we are getting the basics right to, to ensure that we provide a, an essential service to our customers. Um, yeah, we meet operational challenges every day, uh, all different, all reactive, and we try to plan as much as possible. Um, but in some instances, this isn't possible and we have to work together and reactively. And we have that really tight knit collaborative working in Thames Water um, and in any water industry as well. Most water industry companies are the same and you, you'll find that also across other utilities as well. Um, yeah, our, our, our biggest challenge is, is then reactive instances where things happen out the blue. Thank you. Um, a question also, Jonathan, is why did you um, pick the apprenticeship route compared to a academic route like through university? Yeah, so I'm um, as a as a as a young guy, a young person when I was at school, um, very hands on. Um, I, yeah, I, I loved um, sort of resistant materials when I was at school. I loved building. Uh, they're building and making things and it, it, it just felt natural to me. Um, the, the other job that I actually wanted to, I wanted to become a chef, um, uh, which, I, which I never uh, never pursued as a, yeah, very much more of a hands-on man. Um, I grew up on the North Kent marshes as well. So yeah, I've spent a lot of time um, building bases and uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> riding around the countryside. So yeah, very hands-on person. No, brilliant. And the other question we've got also, is what do you say for apprentice like young people now thinking apprenticeship might be for them? What would you say is the top skills they need to maybe consider to maybe work on or improve to net to make them the best person they can be if they're applying? Um, communication is very key, uh, and having that confidence from a communication point of view. And don't, don't get me wrong, that doesn't happen all, overnight. Um, I was. Yeah, I've never been this confident. If you was to ask me 
10 years ago if I would if I would do a live event and speak to you all today I would have most probably shied away from it um yeah it's something that you can really build on and really learn and and that and that is yeah working collaboratively with people provides you with that confidence to communicate with other people Perfect. We've got another question here. Are the colleges local to where your apprenticeship is and is the first year spent full time at college? So things have slightly changed from when I was an, an apprentice at Thames Water. Um, I, I, uh, I'm not here just to promote Thames Water. I'm here to promote STEM apprenticeships in general. Um, when I did my apprenticeship, it, uh, the college that I attended was in Kingston. Um, I've lived in Kent all of my life, so yes, I had to travel every day by train. Um, but if, it, for example, if uh, you was to take an apprenticeship at uh, another water company, I'm sure there'd be more localised colleges um, uh, in and around their area. Thames Water is the one of the uh, is the largest uh, uh, water company in the UK, and we cover a large catchment area. So we have multiple colleges to serve that area um, with our apprentices. Perfect. Thank you. We've got were the opportunities available to you mainly in the water industry or across many industries after your apprenticeship? Yeah, so uh, yeah, um, for me, I, I thought I'd, uh, after my apprenticeship at Thames Water, I spent some time as a technician and then I decided to see what another industry was like. And I went and worked in the power industry and I, I worked in, uh, 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 I looked after uh, from a maintenance point of view uh, for uh, free, sorry, free 400 megawatt combined cycle gas turbines as a maintenance technician, which is very interesting, very diff But there was processes that overlapped, um, such as cooling water, for instance. We pumped the cooling water from the sea, and then we treated that to remove the minerals away from that. Um, very similarly, what we do in what we, we have a desalination plant in Thames Water, where we remove brackish water from the Thames and, and turn that into drinking water. They do the same process generally in uh, coastal power stations uh, to, to remove the minerals and the salts so that it can so it can go into their boilers and not create scale and calcium issues. So yeah, it, so broad a range of um, industries that, that these, that the knowledge that you can learn in industry and at college can work in. Um, like I said at the beginning, um, that year at college, I spent time with people that work for BAE systems, um, looking after baggage handling systems, guys that work for Nestle, um, uh, making coffee. Um, there, there's yeah multiple range of industries that these that these skills that you can gain can, uh, can be used anywhere. Another question. Um... What's actually what I've got is actually um, when you're actually choosing to look at apprenticeships as a route, why did you go for Thames Water over all the different other companies who were advertising at that time or promoting the apprenticeships? Um, last year? Yeah, OK. Um, I, I suppose it was that attraction to working in London as well. Um, that, that was really key for me. Um, London was the place to be uh, when I when I started my career. Um, and also that broad outreach as well um, across other areas and, and to meet meet different people. Um, yeah, it is always good to work closer to home. Um, them opportunities are still avail are available um, in your own local areas. Um, it, yeah, it's quite. A, yeah, I've, <laughs> I wasn't really expecting that question actually, but yeah, I, I think it was the attraction to working in London mainly. Um, another question we've got here is actually how widespread are the different options available to go further within an apprenticeship? Sorry, what was that again, James? Oh, sorry. Um, the question was how widespread are the different options available to go further within an apprenticeship? So, yeah, I was quite fortunate um, to even during my apprenticeship, I got the opportunity to do a higher national certificate. Um, that was based on the merit and 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 how well I was doing within my my first two years as an apprentice. Uh, but then even after that, I, I have had opportunities academically again to uh, I topped up to a high national diploma, and then uh, later on in my career, I had a short break from academia, and then two years later, I decided to top up to a, a bachelor's degree. Um, th there is opportunity. You've just got to be be willing and show that passion. Um, 
even from a non-academic point of view, that there is opportunities to, to go into different parts of the business. Um, as I said earlier, T Thames Water is a broad range of, uh, of, of things that we do to keep this machine working, this operational machine. We have customer service, we have operational departments, we have capital delivery departments where we deliver multi-million pound projects. Um, we have um, uh, you know, like customers billing, finance, commercial services teams. There is so many opportunities in just one industry and that and that can be that can be across all sorts of utility industries. They need that that internal infrastructure to keep that machine running. So there's opportunities everywhere. Um, it I get involved in uh, commercial framework agreements is something that we have where generally they are based on engineering and they need some technical guidance as uh, where they're taking from a commercial point of view. Um, so yeah, you can develop opportunities there and then move into different parts of businesses, uh, even even away from engineering and STEM. Um, it can, yeah, it can just springboard you into them opportunities. Thank you for that. Uh, so we've got one last question. If there's any more, if anyone wants to send them in, because um, we'll do this last one. And then if anyone's got anything they can think of after, you can always use ask an ambassador at canterbury.ac.uk if you've got any burning questions you think of when you leave today. But we've got this one currently, which is what requirements did you need for the apprenticeship? So, yeah, at, at the time of doing my apprenticeship in 2008, it was uh, five A's to C's um, across uh, English, math, science. Um, but I'm, I'm not sure if that is completely the case today. Um, obviously, 2008 was quite some time ago. Um, uh, look on the government website. Look on look at look on the websites of the um, companies that you're applying for as well. Uh, they will have the criteria there that that you will need to meet. But I don't I don't think it would be out of reach even if you didn't meet that criteria. Again, it's all about that like, personality and the way you communicate as well and that confidence. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So thank you for joining us today, Jonathan. You've answered lots of great questions. Um. And if anyone's obviously you won't have missed it because you're all here but if anyone wants to watch it back or share it with anyone that wasn't able to make it it will be this talk will be going on our website um, later this week and um, we've also got some pre-recorded videos available on our website throughout the week which you can watch on our website um, and we've also got some other live events which you can sign up to so this is our timetable of everything we've got going on throughout the week so thank you everyone for joining today. We hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, Jonathan, and I hope you all have a great rest of apprenticeship week.